And now, Davos Colette. Okay, hey everybody. My name is David Collette. I'm the head of technology for the conference. Uh, and I'm also the high school IT coordinator and a theory of knowledge teacher at this school. Recently, I completed my dissertation on online social networking and third culture kids. And so, as a result, uh, my presentation will be on teens and online social networks. <laughs> Using the conference theme as kind of a model to follow, I would like to kind of propose a disrupt a rethink and a change for us to kind of consider as we go through the conference, especially as we'll be dealing with students and especially on Saturday when you'll be able to view student presentations. So I'd like to start with a rather controversial clip from a video by Gary Turk, uh, and this went viral about, a, I guess, a year and a half ago, um, in which it was proposed uh, that essentially the online identity is a separate from, uh, element to the offline identity. And I won't go further than that at this point, but I'll just show part of the clip. I have 422 friends, yet I'm lonely. I speak to all of them every day, yet none of them really know me. The problem I have sits in the spaces between looking into their eyes or at a name on a screen. I took a step back and opened my eyes. I looked around and realized that this media we call social is anything but when we open our computers and it's our doors we shut. So what Gary's basically positing is that we actually have you know, the real, the positive, the physical identity, and then we have the identity that's buried in the computer that is actually, as he would argue, disingenuous, or, or, or at least a distraction. That may be true in some cases, but actually, as uh, I would like to propose, we haven't really identified yet. And as such, my dissertation was based on the idea of who are online third culture kids. Uh, as teachers, uh, we deal with them every day. We are international teachers, and so who are these learners that are in front of us on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, being a TCK myself, uh, just to kind of give, give you an example of me, <coughs> uh, I was born in Saudi Arabia. I then moved to Indonesia, where I went to Jakarta International School. I then went to Australia for university, back to Indonesia to teach, on to Qatar, to Manila, and then I guess I would consider when people ask where are you from, I'm from New Zealand, go All Blacks, um, that's right. Um, and uh, I suppose my home would be kind of where my stuff is, so Manila, sometimes Bali. Um, <clears throat> I would like to propose the rethink on online social identity and kind of what shapes it. And it's based kind of on the research that I did and kind of the interviews that I did with my students. So this is, uh, as you can see up on the right, uh, my online social identity, or at least it, the map of it. These are kind of my connections around the world. Um, and this is actually a, a concept that was brought to me that was quite interesting, that was brought to me by one of the students I interviewed. And she came from Oman to Dubai, went on to uh, Singapore, and then came to ISM. And she described online social networking as an interactive scrapbook of her life. And it's kind of interesting to think about, because when we think about Facebook or Twitter or these other things, we kind of think about posting something or you know, just in the moment. <clears throat> but for her, this was actually a contiguous element of her culture. This was part of who she was. Um, and as someone who transitions and moves from place to place, it's actually quite rather, in, rather important to kind of have that element of rather than kind of be abruptly separated from your life, rather have something that actually holds it together. So essentially, online social networking is a navigation mechanism. It stores your information, it stores who you are, but it's also an anchor to your old lives and your old identities. But it also, interestingly enough, is a scout for your new life. If your schools have uh, you know, ambassador programs, oftentimes Facebook is the first way that a new student will interact with your school. They'll kind of reach out to their buddy over in a new school, and they'll kind of make friends with somebody, and then that'll be their first interaction with that place. So what does this mean? So I think personally that really we need to kind of rethink the way that we, ch uh, and change the way that we actually consider the identity of these people, they, these students, these third culture kids. Uh, and I think we need to change our attitude towards online social networking from the idea of the physical and the online to one that is really intermeshed. 
These students believe that they are the same person online as they are offline. And maybe there are slight differences between them, but they don't see a difference themselves. So that would be the change, I would say. And so to kind of end my presentation, I'd like to kind of show an example that I think uh, is a, a student example that kind of follows on uh, from Gary Turk's uh, perspective that I think would probably more accurately represent what our students would say they are on online social networks. I have 5,000 friends. Wait, that's the Facebook limit, right? You know I would have more if I could, right? Okay. We're at our most happy with an experience we share. So share it on Instagram when everyone is there. Be there for your friends and they'll be there for you too. And if they're not there, then a text message will do. So when you're in public and you start to feel alone, nothing better to do than take out your phone. When I was a child, I would never be at home. Go out with my friends and on our bikes we would roam. But when my bike broke, I didn't know what to do. But now with YouTube tutorials, I do know what to do. <laughs> when things go wrong, we blame it on technology. When all you need to do is charge your battery. And if you go out to the world and leave this distraction behind, you may lose what you could have called mine. <laughs> so disrupt, rethink, change. And uh, I would uh, posit that as you meet these third culture kids, this new breed of, of human beings, so to speak, um, really kind of think about who it is that you're talking to. Because I, can't, I think Essentially, in order to understand the learner, we really need to understand their identity first before we can build on that and actually understand how they are best learning and how to best teach them. Thank you.